Welcome to the Hackberry House of Chosun, and this is Bob. I'm reading today from the Free Grace Broadcaster, issue 245 from fall of 2018. This is a little booklet that can be sent to your house free, quarterly, and it will bless you with a lot of the old-time preachers, men like Spurgeon and Watson and Owen and Jonathan Edwards, things like that. They're all in this particular edition, and the edition is about meditation. There'll be a different topic each quarter. All you have to do is contact them and ask them for this, and they'll send it to you. Of course, every group likes an offering, but they will not be demanding that of you. So uh, check them out. Chapel at mountzion.org if you want an email address, or just the website, www.chapellibrary, two L's in the middle, chapellibrary.org. Well, we're doing Arthur W. Pink today. You remember that name, I'm sure. He lived from 1886 well into the 20th century, 1952. He was a pastor, an itinerant Bible teacher, an author, born in England also, as so many of these great men were. And he talks about chewing the bread of life, the commands, the exhortations, the admonitions of the Bible are not so many abstractions. No, they, they are a revelation of God's will for me. I must read the scriptures as addressed to me personally. When I come to some word of God that condemns my ways, I must not pass it over, but be honest and take it unto myself. And may God give all of us grace to daily appropriate both his promises and his precepts. After a certain portion of the food spread before me had been placed on my own plate and in my mouth, uh, the next thing is to chew it, uh, to chew it slowly and thoroughly. But in this matter, most of us are serious offenders. We bolt our food. We swallow it before it's been properly masticated. We eat too hurriedly. That's the chief reason why uh, so many suffer from dyspepsia, which is a Digestive disorder characterized by pain, heartburn, or nausea. Indigestion, in other words. And they give their stomachs the work to do that the teeth were intended to perform. A little food, thoroughly masticated, will supply far more nutrition to the system than a lot of food swallowed almost whole. And our general health would be much better, too. Well, this is equally true spiritually. Thousands of God's children are grievous offenders here. They've never learned to use their spiritual teeth. The bread of life must be chewed if we're to derive from it the sustenance we so much need. What do I mean? This, meditation stands to reading as mastication does to eating. Reread and ponder this last sentence. Let me reread it for you. Meditation stands to reading as mastication does to eating. Dear reader, listener, you will derive far more benefit from a single verse of Scripture read slowly and prayerfully and duly meditated upon than you will from ten chapters read through hurriedly. Meditation is well nigh a lost art. And it's at the root of most of our troubles. How many complain that they find it so difficult to remember passages of Scripture, passages that they've read perhaps many times? Well, this is easily explained. It's because the passage was not turned over in the mind. It was not duly pondered. Did you ever notice that the, the blessed man of Psalm 1 meditated in God's law day and night? Meditation is a wonderful aid to, to fixing in our minds verses and passages of Scripture. Let's give an illustration of what we mean by meditation. We select one of the most familiar verses in all the Bible. Let's say Psalm, Psalm 23, 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, and thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now, as I begin to meditate upon this, I take each word or expression separately, and then I ask them questions. 
Now, the first thing that strikes my attention is the way in which the verse opens. It doesn't say, when I shall walk through the valley, but yea, though I walk. I ponder this over. I ask it a question. I say, why this indefinite language? Is it not certain that one day I shall be called on to walk through the valley of shadows? And then I remember that blessed word in 1 Corinthians 15, 51. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Then I see why the Holy Spirit caused this verse to open thus. Next, I turn to the central thing in this verse, the valley of the shadow of death, through which the believer who does die uh, passes. You know, m many, most of us will die and not be caught up because we, you know what I mean. I ask, why is dying likened to walking through a valley? Now, what are the thoughts suggested by this figure? And as I turn this question over in my mind, it soon occurs to me, as it should to anyone who, who gives it a little thought, why a valley suggests peacefulness, fertility, beauty, and particularly easy travel. A valley is the antithesis of a mountain, which is difficult and dangerous to climb. In contradistinction, then, from climbing a mountain which is arduous and hazardous, death is likened to walking through a valley which is delightful and safe. And then I go back to the beginning of the verse and note thoughtfully each single word. As the believer comes to the end of his earthly pilgrimage, he learns that death is simply like passing through a valley. Note he walks and not runs, as though afraid. And then observe, though I walk through, he doesn't stay in the valley. He walks through it. Death is only a door through which the believer passes from these scenes of sin and sorrow to the realm of glory and bliss. Next, I observe that this valley is called the shadow of death. Why is this? Now, I must not hurry or I shall be the loser. Let me continue pondering each word separately so that I may extract its own peculiar sweetness. What is a shadow? Ah, how often it terrifies. How many of us, especially during childhood, were frightened by shadows? But if we had only walked right up to them, we should have quickly discovered they were powerless to injure us. And how many a believer has filled the valley of death with terrifying phantoms? How fearfully has he contemplated these images of his own unbelief? Oh, fellow believer, there's nothing, absolutely nothing, for thee to fear in death should it overtake you before the Lord Jesus returns. This valley is called the valley of the shadow of death because a shadow is the most harmless thing there is. And now, as though at last... The believer has fully grasped the blessedness of these beautiful figures, having discovered that death is not a difficult and dangerous mountain to climb, but a valley, peaceful and easygoing to pass through. Having learned that in this valley there's nothing more terrifying than a shadow, he now cries with exulting confidence, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. So here then is an example of what we mean by <clears throat> feeding on God's word. Meditation stands to reading as mastication does to eating. Take a single verse of scripture at the beginning of the day. Write it out on a slip of paper. Carry it with you wherever you go. Refresh your memory as opportunity occurs by rereading it. Pray over it. Ask God to give you a blessing out of this verse to reveal to you its beauty and preciousness. And then ponder each word separately. Ask the verse questions and seek to discover its deeper meaning. 
Suppose you are meditating on Psalm 34, 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. Ask such questions as these. Why the angel? Who is it? Encampeth. Note the perfect tense, continuous. What is suggested by this figure? Around about. What is meant by this? Them that fear him. Am I one of them? And delivereth them. From what? And then find answers from other scriptures that speak of deliver and deliverance. Next, assimilation, the process of taking in and fully understanding information or ideas. This is the result of appropriation, mastication, and the chief end in view, assimilation. The food that I eat is to supply the, the waste of the body. The food that I have masticated and digested is now taken up into my system, <coughs> excuse me, and is transmuted into blood and tissue, thereby affording health and strength. The food thus assimilated appears in the vigor of my step, the strength of my arm, the, the glow on my face, and now equipped. My system is able to ward off the disease germs that attack my body. All of this has its counterpart in the spiritual man. The food that I have taken into my soul, if properly digested, will build up the new nature. It will nourish faith and supply the needed strength for my daily walk and service. Moreover, it will be a safeguard against the germs of temptation that assail me. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119, 11. Here then is the grand end in view. God's word is given us to feed upon, and this feeding is for the purpose of translating the scriptures into the terms of daily living. The principles and precepts of the Bible must be incorporated into my life. The word has not been assimilated until it has become the regulator of my walk and the dynamo of my service. Now that is from Studies in the Scripture, Arthur Pink, Studies in the Scripture. Again, available, that book that I just mentioned, Studies in the Scriptures, is available from this same place where you will be requesting your free Free Grace Broadcaster, Chapel Library. Just contact them. All right. It's been good to be with you again today. It's just a short one for the morning. Lord willing, those who are with me in real time, tomorrow is Sunday. Tomorrow we finish up the David Livingston story. And uh, I do hope you'll be there for that moment. It's an interesting conclusion for sure. And uh, Lord willing, after that, we start doing a three-part week. I believe this is the way we're supposed to go. We'll do Brainerd, of course. We'll do Romans, of course. And a third thing, well, I, I won't tell you that one right now, but there'll be a third item, and we will rotate between those three. As we're doing now, only Livingstone will be replaced with something else. All right, hang in there. It's good stuff coming. God bless you. This is the Hackberry House of Chosun, and Lord willing, we will talk very soon. Bye-bye.